Hi everyone, in this video I will show you one trick with coroutines which can help you solve your performance problems. Imagine we created a game which runs nicely in a small prototype, but when we increase the game objects the game starts to be completely unplayable and the profiler is showing big performance spikes. But with this trick we will optimize this completely unplayable game to nicely playing game by distributing slow calculations over multiple frames with the help of coroutines. Also I would like to mention you can support me on Patreon and you will get all the project files from my past tutorials and of course also from this one and the link is in the description. And also not to forget you can check my courses on Udemy. But now let's start. So I will introduce you the scene. So basically we have field of the stars. All of them are prefabs and when we open them, they have sprite render and also they have a sprite parent with a scale and rotate script. The script looks like this. Basically in an update method we are changing scale and rotation. And for the scale we are using sine wave with a time dot time since level load parameter plus some random offset and the result is number between minus 1 and 1, but we want only positive number, so we are calculating absolute value from it, and then we are lerping this cycling number between 0 0.8 and 1.2. And to create vector from it, we are multiplying it with a vector 1. To change rotation in z-axis, we are using quaternion.eulayer with the same time.time since level load, but we are multiplying it by 100 for faster rotation, and also we are adding some random offset. And then we will have a simple spawner object with a script which looks like this. It basically have one method called instantiate star and it is basically getting screen space position from mouse and converting it to word space position and on this exact position we are instantiating our player prefab. Now the player prefab looks like this. When we open it we have two scripts on it. First is the same scale and rotate script we saw earlier. And the second is the most important one. It's called player logic and we would like to optimize it later. The script have also one parameter called explode particles. And when we look on them, it is a prefab with a just particle system, which is doing the simple explosion effect. And then to call our instantiate star method, we created inside canvas UI event component which we added to UI background image. So basically, when we click somewhere in a background, our player prefab will appear on the same place where we clicked. Now let's go back to the player logic. And here in awake method, we are caching all red stars in a list by calling with tag, and the tag name is red star. Then we have a star method which have a return type which is not a void but it is I enumerator and it is basically coroutine and when it is defined in a star method it is starting automatically so we don't need to call start coroutine on it. And the advantage of coroutine is when we need to call actions which should be executed one after other you can use coroutine as a playlist where inside you can yield another coroutines which will be running one after other. And here we are basically yielding two coroutines inside while loop. First is defining going to the nearest star and second is defining eating the star by scaling it down. And the while loop is valid only if we have some stars left in our list. Now each iteration in our while loop we are starting with a method called bubble sort by distance and it is basically grabbing all the red stars and sorting it with a bubble salt algorithm but the process is quite slow especially when we have a lot of stars. The second thing in our while loop is coroutine which is called go to target star and here we are adding the nearest star as a parameter and inside we are checking if the square distance between our player and the target star 
is more than 0.1 and if yes our player is moving towards the star by a small step which is defined by time dot delta times time 4. The third coroutine is called eat target star and it is basically scaling down the star. So in a while loop we are checking if the square magnitude of the scale vector is more than 0.1 and if yes we are changing local scale number with the same function move towards as we was using in a go to target star but the target number is vector 3.0 now when the while loop finish the target red star is basically very small and we will disable it and remove it also from the list and now when we finish our main loop so we ate all red stars we can run the last method which is called explode and here we are basically only instantiating the particle explosion prefab and we also deactivating our player star game object so let's try it now let's click somewhere and we can see that our yellow player star is following the logic first it is finding nearest star then it is moving towards the star and at the end it is eating it and when it finish with all the stars it will explode so this works correctly but now when we activate the second star field let's try it and after i place the player the game is crazy slow basically unplayable let's also check the profiler and we can see huge spikes and also let's show the stats and the frame rate is dropping to the 6 frames per second but the thing is if we have problem like this and we know what is causing it we can fix it quite easily so let's open the player logic one more time and i know that the problem is in the bubble sort method so to solve it we need a way how to distribute this slow calculation over multiple frames and for this we can use concept of coroutines because they can be suspended on current frame and also resumed later so to convert this method to coroutine we just need to replace void return type with the i enumerator and also we need to yield it somewhere but for now let's yield it at the end now to use coroutine instead of method we need to also yield it in our while loop so let's write there yield return but now the coroutine is calculating the same thing in one frame so it is exactly slow as our previous method so to fix it we need a way how to calculate time how long each cycle of this loop will take so we need to create two float variables first one will be start time and the second one will be end time now let's calculate start time at the beginning of our loop iteration by calling start time equals to time dot real time since startup and also let's define the end time at the end of our loop iteration and it will be the same so basically we can calculate the exact time between start time and end time by subtracting these two values but we need to store it so we need another float variable called elapsed time so let's create it and also initialize it with zero because for each iteration we would like to add to the elapsed time the exact time which this iteration will take and as i said let's calculating it by subtracting end time minus start time now the elapsed time is growing little by little every loop iteration and we need to restrict it by some number so we will allow only few iterations every frame and then we will yield it so the execution will be suspended until the next frame and by this the performance hit will be significantly smaller but the execution will take a little longer so let's create new float variable called the desired time and now we need to ask if our elapsed time is more or equal to desired time and if yes we will first reset our elapsed time to zero so it can calculate next batch of loop iteration times and also we will suspend execution with yield return now now we need to define our desired time and if our game should run in 60 fps we can calculate the initial desired time by dividing one by 60 
which is 0 0.016, but we can round it to 0 0.015. And let's test it. And now we can see our huge spikes are gone and we can see much smaller reasonable spikes and our game is completely playable. Now only downside is that the calculations are taking much longer but sometimes we don't need to calculate something in one frame and we can distribute calculation over more frames. So that's basically everything for this video. I hope you like it. And if yes, please hit the like button, share the video or write me some comments. Thank you very much and see you in the next video.